before serving. Just in time to make us feel like old gits, it's been 10 years since the Dreamcast launched in Japan. And while its shelf life was tragically short, the system has been an undead console of sorts, climbing out of its grave every so often for a new game popping out in Japan, where the limited stock was soon snatched up by collectors. All of these recent games have one thing in common. Every last one of them was a scrolling shooter ported from arcades. While we should be grateful for getting any games of our favourite retired system at all, it would be nice to get something different for a change. This is where Yarnworks break in to save the day with Wind and Water Puzzle Battles. This brand new independent release is published by Red Spot Games, who also released Last Hope in 2007, and Costa Rican based Yarnworks consists of just two people who for the most part have done everything you see in this game. Wind and Water is in fact a port brought over from the open source handheld of GP2X. Now don't go in thinking this means the game will be simple and short, what you get here is a fully fleshed out deep puzzle game crammed full of features that will keep you playing for hours. The basic premise is simple, you have a stage full of colour blocks or elements and you have to stack four of one element into a diamond to clear them. Any of that same colour connected to that diamond will also disappear. There's a lot more to this than you would expect though, as the game mechanics are deceptively deep with many ways to raise your score. Almost too many to even mention here. You can create chains if a set of elements are cleared from falling after one another. You can get bonus points for clearing two elements at the same time, depending on your difficulty setting. You can get combo timers, and there's also the wind and void elements, which really spice things up. These two elements will only pop up after filling a combo bar, and placing a wind block within a diamond of water blocks, the wind of water the title, you'll clear all the water blocks off the screen. Combining a void block with any other element will clear that element from the screen. And if you're really jammy, surrounding a void with every single element, including the wind, will clear the entire screen. These mechanics will be quite daunting at first, but luckily there's a tutorial mode which explains everything you need to know in great detail. There are three game modes available to you, but you'll be spending the bulk of your time in the story mode. Here you are greeted with a Super Mario World-like map, in which you must complete each stage to progress further with some optional branching paths. You play as Amy who has been given the job of teaching everyone she finds about the rules of Wind and Water and rallying up the cast for the arcade release of the game. Along the way you bump into the Yarn Pair who are still developing parts of the game which leads to many things going tits up. I don't want to spoil the story too much but let's just say that it's hilarious. It's full of in-jokes and laugh out loud moments that are superbly presented. This may quite possibly be one of the most entertaining and well written stories I've seen in a puzzle game ever. It sure does beat the usual Let's fight now for no reason, okay, that you normally get in puzzle games. The stages of story mode are mainly mission based, where you must complete a task like clearing 100 blocks off a certain element or pulling off a special combo, but there are also versus battles against characters you come across, as well as some mini games. These worry aware like games include this driving game where you must avoid other vehicles, or this one is a green blob thing where you must press the corresponding buttons to pass through elements, or this samurai one where you must chop ice cream and apples in half. There are plenty of other features too, like the making of building which you can gain access to after beating the first puzzle battle. This area is an achievement section of sorts, so passing certain tasks in any of the other modes will unlock behind the scenes information about the game. There is also a gallery you can unlock. The overworld shop is where you can buy hints on how to unlock the making of achievements, and also where you can buy gallery pages, the mini games, and other useful stuff. From a humorous story to a ton of unlockables to earn, there is a lot to keep you busy here. The arcade mode is where you can brush up on your skills in the puzzle battles, either by playing against a computer or with a second player. Puzzle battles are the most intense element of Wind of Water, as you have to use strategy and quick reflexes to beat your opponent by getting enough combos and specials to push their press up to the top of the screen before they do so to you. It's best not to really go into the versus mode until you've really mastered the mechanics of the game, because otherwise they're gonna kick your ass. The puzzle mode is a single player feature where you must clear all the blocks on the screen with a very limited amount of moves. There are dozens of these puzzles to beat, and they get rather mind bending, but you can play at your own pace, unless you want the best time that is. Finally, the extras mode is where you can see everything that you've unlocked as well as the stat screen tells you your progress in excessive detail. 
from how far into the story you are to how many blocks of each element you've cleared in every mode. This game keeps track of everything! To emphasise just how indie this game is, they were actually letting people purchase custom sprites to be used in the game. And you put in this little code and look, it's me with a sombrero! <laughs> Brilliant! All in all, Wind & Water is built from a passion for gaming, and this beams through in the sheer attention to detail, depth and variety on offer. You can just tell from playing it that the Iran team had a blast developing it. It has a charming quality to it throughout, from the beautifully rendered pixel art and slick animation to the diverse and catchy soundtrack. Not to mention the inventive and generally funny story. It takes a little while to get into, but once it clicks, you will be hooked. And it's the little details that really make this game. Every inch of it feels like it was lovingly crafted. And while it has been ported from the GP2X, a lot has been added to this version, including... Look! One of the characters is a VMU with a face! So good! <laughs> this is just as good as any puzzle game from a big studio and can stand toe to toe next to some of the best out there. And I've been especially impressed by just how much content they filled it with. For $40, this is not going to be for everyone, but if you like puzzle games like Panel Dupon and Pio Pio, you're going to love this. Either way, this is a brilliant way of celebrating the Dreamcast's 10th anniversary. Submit to the Undead Console! <coughs> Sorry. Rise from your grave.